Hey guys, it's Techo Freak here, and welcome to episode 13 of my Let's CS Custom Story Creation tutorial for Amnesia. And uh, today, uh, we're going to do some uh, some cool stuff. Uh, I wasn't sure what to do in this episode, in the last episode, so I couldn't tell you guys what I was going to do. But uh, I decided what I was going to do, and I'm going to go over how to use timers. Uh, and I'm going to use them for a specific scenario. I'm going to use them to... Um, uh, spawn in a grunt after 60 seconds have passed and then at the same time we're gonna start another timer in that timer that's going to despawn the grunt after another 60 seconds so uh, I th thought it would be cool especially since we got like this little hallway going now I thought it'd be kinda cool to use something like that um, I wasn't very happy with uh, the way this hallway looks I mean I loaded up the game and uh, I finished uh, if you guys haven't seen the last episode, I had a problem with the key real quick that I had to fix. So I fixed that uh, off camera. I actually forgot to move the ceiling here. Let's probably move the ceiling. Uh, yeah, but um, I did uh, have a problem with the key, and I, I just forgot to do something on camera. So I already fixed that. So that's not no problem. Um, I did. Uh, uh, I, I wasn't really happy with the way this hallway looked when I started up the map after I opened the key the door with the key uh... i think i might move this one more and like maybe put it here and then shift over this door really quick there's gonna be a little bit of map editing in this episode alongside it with the uh... timer stuff so uh... yeah i'm gonna move this all just one to this uh... to this one right here and i might even move them all if i can select them all let's see uh... no i can't i'm gonna have to move them one by one right, that's fine actually i have a better idea of how to do it uh, okay uh well before anything before I even move the 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 uh the ceiling I'm gonna go ahead and move these a little bit up and even before that I'm gonna go ahead and move this door over here and then I'm gonna do I'm gonna like uh do this and this is gonna select everything in that area so I selected everything and that includes the floor as well everything here and the and the floor so I'm gonna press Control and then click on the floor to deselect it. And then I can move all of this in just one movement like that. And let's move that over and make sure that it's good. Looks good. Um, yeah, so that's going to go there. And then we're going to slide this door back over. There we go. Yep, and, and I want to move all of this, all of, uh, all of this wall here, one more here, to up to this column right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, and I'm going to like go like this. Can I move at the same time? Yeah, that's not going to work very well. I'm going to have to zoom out a lot more. Alright, so this is just me being lazy. Uh, and that selected that whole, all those walls and the floor, so let me deselect the floor. And then uh, now I just have all of these selected, and I can just move them to my liking. Let's go ahead and move these, like, right there. So how does that look? That looks a little bit derp. Uh, let's move it one more time. So how does it look now? Alright, that looks better in my opinion. Uh, there are some things you can put in like corners, by the way. I never showed you guys this. They're like a column that you can put in the corner to basically hide that kind of stuff. I was going to show you guys. I think I forgot to do that. Maybe I'll do it really quick right now. It's worth the mention. Because uh, it does look a little bit derp compared to like these other ones. So uh, you can just go to like static objects and uh, then go to where, it's, where you found the walls, which is mansion base. And, uh, here, uh, uh, no, not here. Somewhere here you can find them. Um, they're, uh, really annoying to put, uh, on, and they're really far, they're, they're really time consuming if you want to put it on every corner. So I usually tend to, uh, remove that or, uh, 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 not use it. Uh, let's see, that's stairs, um, Special. Let's, let's just go up with the arrow keys. See what we can find. Um, they don't seem to find it here. Uh, let's see. Oh wait, wait, wait. That's a pillar. That's the short. Oh, I could use a short one for this for this stuff. Oh, here we go. Um, we wanna. We can use one of these. I'm trying to. S I, I don't know which one was it again. I think it's this one actually. Let's see. Uh, put it right there. And we just gotta grab it right there and rotate it. Yeah, this is, I think this is the one. Yeah, convex. So you, as you can see, it's like it looks uh, 
like a half cir circle, a semicircle, and you just turn that, and there you go. Looks a lot better, looks more natural. How does it look on this side? Well, I didn't flip over the wall yet, so you can't really see it. Let's uh, go ahead and flip over this wall. Or actually, we should reselect all of them and then rotate them, because I'm lazy like that. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. Even though I'm going to put rooms, I'll do that later. Deselect the floor. Make sure nothing else is selected. Anything else selected? I feel like it is. We'll find out as soon as I try and move this. Uh, oh, yeah. Let me duplicate all of these and then rotate them. And they'll rotate. Yeah, I guess I didn't select anything else. And now we have the other side. All cool looking. Alright, um, yeah. Uh, that's good. And I probably want to do it on this side too. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and do the same thing. I'm telling you guys, one of the worst things I hate is map making here. If you want to make a really beautiful looking map, you pre be prepared to spend a lot of time doing it because it's not easy. You have to, if you want things to look right, you have to take your time. And I'm not one to like to take time, so I like to cut corners and do things like this, which uh, I wouldn't recommend you guys do. But you know, again, uh, this I can't be here map editing for too long. Uh, okay, so next, let's uh, rotate these two. Again, I'm going to be lazy. Oh, maybe not. Uh, deselect the floor. And the ceiling as well. Okay. I sure I haven't been like moving the ceiling. I feel like I have. Nah, it looks alright. Okay. And let's rotate these as well. Rotate. Oh, oh I forgot to... Uh, Duplicate before I do that. Why are they doing that? I don't know why they did that. Why are you doing that? Don't quite understand why they're doing that. Alright, that's like. Just delete them. Alright, we'll do them one by one. I have no clue why it's doing that. It's trying to troll me. So, let's see if this one does that. No, it doesn't. When I select it one at a time, it doesn't do it. Alright, it's whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and do it. Hey, that's my punishment for trying to cut corners. Alright, and um, we're going to put a, a bunch of walls over here. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. Uh, it's going to be in static objects and just walls. Come on, where are they? Wall. Can't they just call them walls? Why do they have to call them default wall two? Alright, uh let's go ahead and just drop that right there. And keep moving them on. Next, next, next. And let's keep going. And it should go like halfway out. Oh no, it doesn't. All right, that's great. Um, yeah, that works. Uh, okay, so that's uh, full. Uh, this side, I was thinking of making it a little bigger, uh, like uh, this thing here. Um, I wasn't too sure what to do because I do have this extra space here. I could just ignore the extra space, or I could use it. Um, uh, I'm not even sure. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll, I want to turn this into, uh, I'll turn this into four rooms. Make them look like a four, four perfect rooms. Alright, that look, that sounds, that sounds good. Or maybe, I'm not even sure. I'm, I'm, I'm very undecided on what to do with this, and I can't be spending too much time on this, because I still gotta do the timer stuff. Um, uh, I'll probably, <sighs> damn it, I want to leave this as one complete room, but I feel like this is too big to be one room on its own, um, and I don't want a door, I don't want to put a door all the way over here, so I'm very undecided right now on what I should do, maybe I can split it up into three smaller rooms, 
make the player search a little more. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe this side, since yeah, maybe this side I'll do two two rooms, but this this the length won't be as long. I'm gonna make this longer, and this one I'll split into three rooms. And you know, rooms are not supposed to be like perfect perfect size, so I'm gonna pretty much just like uh, like one here and one there, and that's it. And the size comes out to be whatever it is. Um, so that's what I'm, what I'm gonna do. So let's go ahead and do something like that. Uh, let's cut it right here. There. All right, and let's keep it going. Misplace that. Put it right there. Wow, that's right. And I got this uh, whole thing that I forgot to do. So let's move this over here. And then move this again. We could use the half, uh, the half one here uh, to make it just look perfect. But then again, I'm lazy and I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to do that. Um, and that works. And then we could put the thing over here in the corner make it look a little nicer uh, okay so that's that and then we gotta rotate duplicate and rotate so let's go ahead and do that rotate that all around I hate map editing because it is so much work and tedious it's actually not much work but it's tedious to make it look the way you want it to look make it look nice especially if you're gonna do something like a castle theme uh, like on the outside like you want out Outdoors, outdoors are the worst. And I am gonna try and show you guys uh, how to do outdoors. I have done like a castle, and trust me, it is not nice in any way. So I'm lazy. I'm gonna copy all of these and deselect the floor, Let's duplicate, and move all of this wall over. So let's go. Let's go there. Let's see how that looks over here. Uh, okay, we'll put the corner there corner corner all right and well, this will be like a small room uh, and this would be a bedroom and this could be a smaller bedroom or maybe like a workplace or something uh, and maybe we can connect one of these with another door I don't know. Uh, we got options we got options but for now we uh, just need to kind of set up the the area there I still need to get into other things um, uh, and actually I'm just gonna put a door somewhere here I'll put a door no since this one's gonna connect to okay I'm gonna have this one connect to this one here because I want there to be some kind of dead end so I want I want this one to connect to this one and then another door here like right here and I want it to connect uh, and I don't want these to connect at all this is gonna be its own room I'm gonna put something in there and since this is a smaller one out of uh, the two I want this one to connect to this one there's gonna be a door here but uh, right now I'm just gonna put a uh, put the door frame and everything Let's delete this and put the one on the other side go ahead and get the doorway and then the door frame doorway O2 and turn it for our viewing. It's the wrong way. It's whatever, because it's going to go there anyways. Oh, it's going to be out, isn't it? Alright. Go in there. Click. Take. Rotate. Rotate. Oh, crap. Forgot to duplicate. Uh, Alright. There we go. Con remember, control these to duplicate, just in case... Uh, uh, we got any new viewers for this video? All right, so uh, yeah. Um, I remember, if if you guys don't, when I say like copy, like when I'm duplicating things, you can find that all up here. You do like uh, edit. You can see like duplicates, Control D, deletes, delete or backspace. I use delete and Control D, and uh, I don't use any of these other ones. I think. Yeah, I don't use on. Oh, Control Z and what? Control Y to undo and redo. Uh, those are pretty much the four controls I use mainly when I uh, edit maps. They're, they seem to be the most useful. So, uh, next uh, we got to do the uh, door frame. Let's go ahead and smack that in there. That's good. We don't have to like do any rotations for that. And let's go ahead and get our door, which is an entity. And we go to doors. Uh, door. Not doors, but door. You know, because why not? Uh, mansion. We want mansion. Yeah. So let's go ahead and place that in there. Make sure it looks good. Yep, looks good to me. Looks like it can be opened. Uh, um, probably turn the door so it opens the correct way. 
Actually, I, I haven't turned any of these doors to turn to open the right way. Uh, well, yeah, well, I mean, the door should be, the handle should be on the right side, am I right? Right? So, I'll probably rotate them eventually, but for now, it's, uh, it's whatever. Alright, uh, in there, um, I'm going to go ahead and put the other door here, so another door right there, so let's go ahead and move that, and then move this one, and then do the same thing over again, so let me try and do this quickly, uh, let's uh, do this, and then do this, and then I did it the wrong way, so I had to rotate it again, and push it back, click, select, rotate, duplicate, control D, remember that, rotate, and drop it right there and save this up uh, okay um, now you want the door frame door frame put it put it there make sure that looks good uh, okay and then we want a door mansion door good thing it's already selected let's actually make this the handle be on the right side for once there we go the way it should be I actually haven't even bothered to notice in other people's uh, custom story which way the handles are uh, and in the United States we use um, uh, the handle being on the right side so it's a bit weird uh, to see them like on the left don't know if that's the way that it's supposed to be I should probably check I should probably check in, uh, in somebody's custom story to see which way they put them the doors uh, okay, so those are the doors. These aren't going to have keys. Actually, uh, some other ones may have keys, like this door and these doors. But this one, for the most part, is going to be open, I think. And he's going to have to look in here to find the other keys to, f to get into the other rooms. Typical amnesia and that kind of stuff. Uh, okay, so uh, let's go ahead and now we actually got to get to uh, the timers because we are running out of time here today. I don't want this episode to be more than 30 minutes, and I don't know where we are now because I don't keep track of the time. All right, so, um, so for uh, like I said, let me go over what I wanted to do again. So I want to use timers. So I want to make a, a script area, like when they enter this place uh, here to the door. I want to, uh, in that script area, I wanted to create a timer, and that timer will set 60 the second the 60 seconds will run on that timer and when the timer runs out an enemy will spawn and he will uh, basically patrol or anything like that probably won't put the patrol notes today I'll do it in the uh, next episode um, uh, I'll probably just drop down the enemy or whatever or as a matter of fact no, 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 yeah I think I'll just spawn the enemy in so and we'll just stand here and watch it spawn in uh, I think that'd be the good way to go about that. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, let's get started on that real quick. I need to have that finished. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and make a script area here because we wanted to walk in the door, and then uh, a timer runs. Let's go ahead and create that, uh, and let's uh, rename it to. Uh, I want it. I want to. I, I want this script area to just make a timer. So maybe I'll just call it create timer. Uh, create timer area or something like that. Create timer area, uh, one. Because I usually like putting ones in my uh in my stuff. So if I ever reuse the same name, I put like two or something. All right. So it's gonna be set active to begin with, and when the player enters that area, a timer will be created. Uh, I believe that's all we need. I need uh, obviously need an enemy. So let's go ahead and drop one in. Uh, an ent an entities an enemy. Uh, where is it? Enemy. And I want to grunt out a brute. Uh, and I'm going to spawn him like right here. I don't know. He could be spawned anywhere. Again, he's going to be facing that direction over there. So it doesn't uh, really matter at this point. Um, I obviously don't want him to be active. So let's deactivate him. And I'm going to call him grunt 2. Because we already have grunt 1. So I'm going to do grunt 2. And save with the map. Alright, so that's all we're going to need. Uh, the player's going to step in here. 60 seconds later, this enemy is going to spawn in. And then I'm going to create another timer inside of that timer. And that timer inside of the timer is going to despawn the enemy. It's going to make, make them fade to smoke. So I'm going to try and avoid them for 60 seconds inside of the uh, the game. And hopefully I don't die. But he will despawn. Um, so uh, that's it for the uh, level editing. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And they're going to go over to our scripting area, uh, our usual place. 
Uh, and as usual, I have an episode 13.hps file for you guys found in the in the wake maps and templates. Here's all the ones for the episodes previous and the one for today. As usual, that's where you can find them. Um, and there's always a link for the description for my custom story below. So just download my custom story and inside of uh, maps and templates, you can find all of these helpful information. So go ahead and do that if uh, you don't already have it. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's go ahead and open up our uh, our scripting stuff. We let's full screen this for once. Uh, eh, not really. Uh, it looks so weird when it's full screen. I'm not used to. I usually have the level editor on the left side, and then I have the um, the uh, the uh, notepad on the right side. So it looks a bit strange. And I don't think I've ever done a video with this full screen. So uh, let's uh, okay. So let's get uh, moving. We got a. Uh, we got to do this. So uh, let's go ahead and add an entity collide uh, callback. So this is going to be just like we did with the uh, player that one time in uh, episode uh, eight. Uh, we're going to make the player interact with the script area. So let's go ahead and copy and just paste this right under. And we want the player to enter oh, to uh, collide when the player collides with this certain area, which is um, create timer area timer area uh, when the player collides with create timer area this function will run and I'm gonna name the function uh, something like uh, create timer create timer script or anything you guys want to call it and the other two can be left default we don't need to change those for our purposes um, okay so now let's go ahead and make a uh, a, uh, a function for that for create timer uh, so uh, the one that it uses for this one is the same one that we use for uh, the monster despawn script. Let's find the monster despawn script, which is right here. Remember that we need these parameters right here, so uh, make sure you got that. So let's go ahead and copy that, and uh, we'll paste it somewhere at the bottom down here. Uh, okay, and we obviously don't want it to be called monster despawn script. We want it to be called create timer. So to so create timer. And we don't need this because it's not what we're doing. Actually, we we are going to use that, but not now. Uh, okay, so uh, create timer, and so when the player steps into uh, or collides with this area, uh, the create timer function will run, and that's uh, down here in create timer. So now we want to add a timer. So let's go over to the episode 13.hps file, and in here you can um, the fir the first uh, command here is uh, add timer. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and go over and explain it to you. We want to create the timer inside of our create timer function, so we're going to add the timer there. So uh, now let's talk about the parameters. So first parameter is uh, I left blank. This is uh, the internal name. I think I've explained this with something else before as well, uh, right here, like. No, not there. Uh, and something else. Um, and the checkpoint, I think. This is uh, the internal name. This is just for your own viewing. This is for your own thing. So you can give the timer a name, like first timer or something like that. But you can also just leave it blank. So I usually don't name them. Usually the name of the function up here that I write uh, tells me uh, what I need to know. So I'm going to leave that blank. Uh, I don't need it. Uh, next is the amount of seconds you want before the function over here is, uh, is uh, run. So um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this. Uh, like I said, I want 60 seconds to go by, and then uh, the uh, the uh, enemy will spawn in. So uh, 60, 60, 16, uh, uh, 60 uh, seconds will run, and uh, or will pass by and then this function here will be called so we want uh, 60 seconds to go by and then the uh, function to be called so this function we can name it whatever I'm going to do uh, spawn grunt something like that spawn grunt spawn grunt you can call the spawn grunt timer uh, it's really up to you but I'm going to do spawn, spawn grunt 1 and uh, that will cr that uh, so uh, we created the timer uh, for uh, 60 seconds, and after the 60 seconds passes, then uh, the function spawn grunt will uh, will will be called, and uh, we obviously need to create that. So let's go right under it. Uh, something I've gotten into the habit of doing wherever the where uh, this is good for just knowing these things. Usually, as always, as you guys can always see, I always separate my uh, my uh, code by like you know a space. Um, when I create a timer in like a function or something like this, 
and it's going to run. I usually attach that other stuff right on there. So I'll show you guys what I mean right now. So uh, as usual, we need uh, the correct parameters for the timer because every single one has its own parameters. This is as parent, as child, I'll say, as entity, I'll count as name, same as always. This one also has a different one, and this one is as timer. So let's go over here, and you guys can see right here, string, and then as timer. Let's go ahead and copy that and bring it over to room 01. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, uh, so this is what I mean. I paste it, and instead of putting a space in between them, I connect them. This is just for my own for my own viewing. I like to do this so I know that because I did something in here, something right after will run with it. So I only do this with timers. I don't think I've ever done it any, at any other occasion. I like to do this with timers because they're like uh, stuck together. So I'm like, oh, okay, so something happens here, and then like a timer runs. I usually can tell by this part right here. So I got this happening, and then there's a timer in there. So it's that's why it's attached to here. So I do this for my own uh, viewing, you know, and I, and, I'm all, and I also do something else that I'm going to show you guys in uh, another minute or two. Uh, so uh, now uh, in here. We're going to rename this to what we call the timer right here, which is a spawn grunt. So let's go ahead and change this to spawn grunt. Spawn. Did I miss something? No, I didn't. Grunt. And one. Uh, so there, uh, spawn grunt one. Uh, and so after 60 seconds, it will run the function. It will call the function spawn grunt one. And that function is right here as timer. And it will do whatever is in here, which we can do anything inside of. So um, now this is where we can choose. Uh, we can choose what goes here. So we want to spawn in the enemy. So we're pretty much just going to set the enemy active. Uh, that's nothing new. We've done it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this and paste it right here. And uh, it's set entity active, and we want to set grunt two this time because it's not the same grunt. It's uh, grunt two, and we do want to set them to be active, so it's going to stay true. Um, so there we go. And remember, we also wanted to create another timer that's going to despawn him after uh, the enemy spawns. So let's go ahead and just hit space here. Let's copy our uh, add timer up here. Copy that. And paste it right under our set entity active. So uh, when the 60 seconds goes by, the enemy will spawn in. And uh, it will set the enemy active. Yeah, it will spawn him in. And then it will create another timer. And I'm going to name uh, the function that's going to call despawn grunt one. So uh, that's just uh, another naming convention, despawn grunt. I want the uh, the grunt to despawn with this new timer. Remember, you cannot name them the same thing. So uh, I want uh, after 60 seconds the grunt to despawn. So now I'm going to go ahead and copy this because we still need the same parameters. It's still a timer, and I'm going to go ahead and paste it right under. Notice how I'm still uh, sticking it together like this. I'm not putting a space in between them. So now this is where the different thing comes in. First, let's fill in the information. I'm going to show you my uh, my little trick. I actually mentioned it in the uh, HPS file over here. If you guys didn't notice. Uh, okay, so um, we want this is going to be despawn grunt one despawn grunt one and we want him to fade to smoke we're not going to use the timer anymore so we want him to fade to smoke pretty much exactly what we did up here in uh, the previous episode so i'm going to go ahead and copy this over uh that's a despawn grunt a despawn enemy to smoke and we're going to despawn uh we're going to fade uh the grunt one to smoke that that was the one that we did before but we're going to change this and we want to fade uh, grunt two to smoke and we want that and we want an effect to be played so we're going to leave it as true and um, and now this is where I was saying with my own like uh, custom that I like to do uh, I usually like to tab these out one more so I press tab tab and tab and I push it out so let me go ahead and save this so it's still together like this and it's tabbed out so whenever I chain timers I like to do this indenting thing, so I know when I'm looking through my code, okay, I indent it. That's not actual like functions and stuff that are running. Those are just my chain timers. Because I do, there, for some, several events, like if you want to make like a cool animation or cool little movie, usually you will use a lot of timers. Uh, you will use a lot of timers. And, uh, and, uh, you would use them back to back to back to back. And I, I, I've, I've had scenarios where I've used up to 10 timers chained right next to each other. So then I do this, I indent it one more for every timer that I have. So then I have this, like, big, like, line going down this way. 
and uh, I do that just so I know that I'm cha chaining timers and that has nothing to do with like uh, the collide callbacks or the add use item callbacks it's all just chain timers so uh, that's something I do and I recommend we recommend you guys do it so when your code does become really uh, large you you guys can tell out what's timers from the actual code so uh, just just a nice little custom that I like to do and yeah I believe we are done here uh, just I always tend to forget at least a small detail or something but I believe we are actually done here so um, I went ahead and go and save this up and uh, I will see you guys in our map in a couple of moments oh guys uh, I actually did forget something here uh, as usual, I forget to do. Uh, to, I usually misname things. So, uh, create timer area. This should be create timer area one, not create timer area just like that. Uh, if you guys uh, look back uh, here, um, uh, create timer area one right here. So, I forgot to do that. So, uh, don't forget to do that uh, if you guys use this. So, uh, I'll make sure you guys, uh, I pointed out in the video uh, before you guys watch it. Um, yeah, so uh, that should work perfectly fine. Now, uh, I, I did want to lower the t amount of time we got to wait here, and then I change it back. Uh, I want I don't want it to take this long to spawn. I'm going to make him take 10 seconds to spawn, and then 10 seconds to despawn, so you guys don't see me for two minutes trying to dodge a uh, grunt. Uh, or one minute trying to dodge a grunt, and one minute waiting for the grunt to spawn. So, uh, yeah, 10 seconds each, 10 seconds to spawn in, 10 seconds to go away. So, uh, yeah, so let's go uh, to our story, and I'll see you there. Alright, guys, here we are on a map again. And uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, get this key here. And uh, unlock that door. And uh, remember that I fixed, the, uh, I fixed this thing with the key, because I forgot to uh, do some things for it. So there's a hallway door key, so go ahead and go here. Let's open this so he can see me when he gets here. And he can charge at me and then just disappear in front of my face. Because that's what we set it to do. So let's go. Come at me. And there's the smoke. Okay. Let's uh, go ahead and head over here and use our uh, hallway door key, which as you can see now has a description down there. So let's go ahead and use that. Remember, as soon as we step through this area here, an enemy should spawn there in about 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and just like peek around like this. Oh crap, my eyes are deep. Oh shit! <laughs> that scared me. Uh, yeah, that scared me. Uh, he's gonna disappear in 10 seconds, so... That's just, uh... Oh, there he goes. But yeah, well that scared me. He charged at me really fast. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there you go. I, I, it's not new that I've gotten scared in my own map before, so it was one time where uh, I uh, put a, a grunt in the closet here, right? And but the grunt doesn't fit in this closet, so the moment he spawns in, these doors fly open and he comes running out. So when I was testing it to see if it worked, I was like, all right, let's see if this works, and then he just blast open the door and charged right at me, and it scared me really bad. So, uh, yeah, you will sometimes get scared by your own map, even if you are prepared for it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that does it for about this episode, guys. Uh, I think it might be a pretty long episode. I don't think I met the uh, under 30 minutes thing that I was trying to do. Uh, but we'll see. Um, in the next episode, I will probably be just doing some touching up. I'll probably show you guys the lantern stuff. Uh, probably just putting the item down or uh, giving it to the player directly through the script. Uh, one of those two. Um, and uh, yeah, that and more, some more map editing that we got to do for the other rooms. There probably won't be any scripting whatsoever in the next episode. But uh, we'll see what I come up with. Uh, again, leave your comments below. Tell me what you guys want to see in the next uh, following episodes. Uh, there are There's a lot to show you. And if you guys give me the idea, then maybe I'll push it down on the list of priorities of things that I got to show you before I can do other things. And... I know that many people just want to see jump scares. There are some things that we got to cover before jump scares. We got to do uh, first. We got to do ambience music. We have yet to do music. We have yet to do sound effects. We need to do sound effects as well. Um, and also, we need to talk about um, uh, prop force and player force. Basically, being able to push 
the player push objects to any anywhere, push an entity basically. Uh, we gotta do that, and then after that we can talk about scares. So that's it for this episode, guys. I'll see you in the next. See ya.